Smoking. It's in the news. Smoking rates are coming down. Many people who still smoke would like to quit. Many smokers have tried quitting a few times already. But it's not an easy thing to do. One thing we know is that quitting smoking can improve your health. And that's particularly true for people living with HIV. But if you are HIV positive and smoke, you may have reasons for doing so. So it may be just that little bit harder to quit. But it's by no means impossible. In fact, it can, with the right tools, be easier than you think. To learn more about HIV and quitting smoking, we talked to three people. Adrian Betts, a smoker who heads an AIDS service organization. Shannon Carney, who works for Toronto Public Health. And Sean Rourke, who heads the Ontario HIV Treatment Network. Let's hear what they have to say. I'm Adrian Betts. I'm a 46-year-old uh, gay pals man. I'm a science fiction and comic book geek. I live in the country and race horses, making me a bit of a cowboy, used to rodeo. Um, but I also work in the city and I'm a social justice advocate and uh, I'm the executive director of an AIDS service organization, the AIDS Committee of Durham Region. But I'm also a smoker. Um, <laughs> smoking is a funny thing. I There are things I love about smoking. Um, I love the reward part of smoking. When I'm working on a proposal or if I'm doing uh, a task which is particularly onerous, um, when it's completed, that reward smoke, fantastic. Uh, it's like, here's a gift to yourself. There's the calm that comes with smoking, that first long deep inhalation, which I can't tell you if you're not a smoker, how good that really feels. Um, and then there's the after dinner cigarette, my one of my all time favorites. I can't tell you how good that one is either. Um, it, it it controls appetite. If you're if you're hungry, you'd have a cigarette instead. And I like that part of it. Um, things I don't like, they're much more shallow, perhaps, but um, they're important. I hate the way my mustache is turning yellow or orange um, because of the smoke that comes out of my mouth and nose. And the yellow fingers, ah, that's so gross. And getting that stain off your skin is impossible. It takes like lemon juice and a Brillo pad to get it off sometimes. Um, and then there's the smell. You're not aware of the smell as a smoker, but when you walk into a space that is clear of, of, of smoke and you can see people's reactions, their noses wrinkle up and, and they go sort of draw back from you. Um, that makes me sad because it, I realize I'm doing something that puts other people uh, in a place of discomfort. I, I don't like doing that. I had my first cigarette when I was six. We used to steal them from my mom's purse and, and go up in the old mill in the park around the corner from her house and smoke them. Um, I didn't inhale, but you know that's what my older brother and sister and the other kids in the neighborhood were doing, and it was cool, it's what you did. And then high school came and the cool kids smoked. And wanting to fit in, especially being an immigrant from Ireland with an accent, um, uh, it, was, <laughs> it was important to fit in. And so I smoked. Um, Later, coming out as a gay man, uh, smoking was a really great way to sort of connect with people without being awkward. Um, you could walk into a bar or any social situation and engage in conversation with someone in a very natural way by asking for a light or for a cigarette. Um, and it was, it was unthreatening. Um, it also gave you something to do with your hands, which, if you weren't old enough to actually drink, um, was a good thing. Um, and then as I got older, it became something I relied on. Um, I relied on it in times of stress. I relied on it when I was under pressure um, and became addicted. Uh, and I'm very aware of my addiction, um, that there is a physical need for nicotine uh, in, um, in my body. I can tell that when I've gone several hours without one, I become agitated, I'm, I'm fidgety, and I, uh, that's a pain. Quitting, wow, I've tried to quit but three times seriously. Um, and the tools I used varied each time, um, the gum and the patch um, or cold turkey. Um, and I've had some success. I quit for, for two years at one time and I quit for eight months another time. Um, both times the reason I returned to smoking was stress related. That something came along that was so overpowering that I needed 
uh, a way to, to regain control. Um, and uh, smoking did that for me. So what would it take to make me quit? Well, that's, uh, that's funny because I've quit before for other people. Um, and I've, I don't know if I've ever, ever actually quit for myself. Um, and that's about being ready to, being open to it. Um, and not doing it because I have to, but doing it because I want to. Hi there, I'm Shannon Carney. I'm a public health nurse for the City of Toronto. I've been nursing for about five years now, and I am a former smoker myself. I smoked for two years, and I was able to live now tobacco-free, although I do still experience cravings, so I have a sense of what you're going through. So a lot of people have probably told you that you need to quit smoking. I'm also going to be one of those people. You do need to quit smoking. Quitting smoking is one of the best things you can do to improve your health, but you need to do it for yourself, not for your partner, not for your pet, not for your children. You need to do it for you. You need to explore why you're smoking and to figure out what your triggers are. If there's anyone in your life that won't want you to quit, you need to get some strategies in place so you can handle those situations. Smoking is a personal matter, and so you can make this change. You have to do it for you. Again, quitting smoking is the best thing you can do to improve your health. It's so difficult to quit smoking because it is a powerful addiction. It is as addictive as heroin and cocaine. Plus, smoking quickly becomes a part of a person's everyday life. It becomes something they do first thing in the morning, after meals, after sex. Uh, it's things that they do when they're happy, when they're sad, when they're stressed. So there's a biological component as well as a behavioral component that makes it very difficult for people to quit. On average, it takes people seven to nine quit attempts to quit smoking for good. But the main thing that we want people to learn here is that from each quit attempt, they'll learn something that can help with the next one and make it easier. What kind of quitting methods work best for people? There's no one way to quit smoking. There are some things that people can do using a medication such as nicotine replacement therapy or a quit smoking pill can double a person's chances of success. And those chances of success increase when it's combined with supportive therapy. Quitting is a process, not an event. There's no such thing as failing at quitting. You just have to keep trying. You will learn something from each quit attempt that will make the next one easier. So there's no such thing as failing. It's just getting up and moving forward with the next quit attempt. Why haven't we addressed smoking uh, to date? Well, I think it's something that, uh, again, people are living longer, uh, people are living almost uh, full lives. Uh, we want to make sure that those years are the best quality years. I mean, people make choices along the way. Our own, we make choices about what we eat, what we drink, what we smoke. And, and I think, um, and people do those, uh, make choices because of things in their lives. And we want to uh, really help people make healthy choices, uh, healthy choices that are right for them at the right time. And uh, we know that People who, uh, when you stop smoking, you can obviously increase the years to your life, but also the quality of those years. And we can, and we can reverse some of the problems that can occur with cardiovascular disease. We know that that's a major uh, issue now with living with HIV that happens earlier. Uh, and we need to be thinking about these things earlier and, and really getting these, getting doctors and, and frontline providers talking about these issues. I think that it's something that I'm not sure it's taboo, but it's something that people just don't talk about and we just need to get it out in the open and uh, I think a lot of people want to stop smoking, uh, but they just don't know how or they don't have the resources to do so and our job really is to try to just connect them into those resources and those opportunities to, uh, to help them make uh, healthier choices. The OHN is an agency that was created by the Ministry of Health, the AIDS Bureau, to improve the health and well-being of people living with and affected by HIV here in Ontario. Our job is to provide the best evidence to get into the hands of people that can make those decisions for themselves about their health and about decisions to, to, to improve their lives in, in various ways. Uh, our, 
th this smoking initiative, we hope in five years has reduced the numbers. We hope that by connecting by connecting the initiatives that are that are happening around the province with healthcare providers, with community-based agencies, people living with HIV, working together with the policymakers and health planners to really create opportunities for for change, to create opportunities for people to make the right choices for them when they're when they're ready for to make those choices. Um, this is something that's very dear to our heart here at the OHTN of, of uh, providing this evidence and it's it's part of the larger provincial strategy for that uh, here in Ontario uh, that will improve the health and well-being of, of those living with HIV and AIDS. So why is quitting so hard? Well, I'm not sure it is hard. I mean, finally. Um, we try to quit many times, but the people who are successful are the people who get to that point where they just say, enough, no more, I've had it. Um, and whatever mechanism they use, they're able to quit and quit for good. I want to quit, at least I think I do. But some days I'm not sure, because am I at that place where you know, that's enough? I don't know. There are so many good reasons to quit smoking. Health-wise, the benefits are achieved in minutes to hours to days to weeks. You'll start feeling better in days and that will continue on. You can also feel proud of yourself. This is a major accomplishment. Food will taste better. Your, your hands and your clothes will not smell of cigarette smoke. There are so many wonderful reasons to quit smoking but you need to figure out what it is for you that will encourage you to take this very important step. Not everybody uh, who smokes is gonna wanna stop, and that's fine. We want to create opportunities for people who, who are ready to, to, to stop or, or are starting to think about it and really provide them with information materials to give them the best research evidence for them to make the best, best decisions. Uh, we know now, and there's lots of studies coming out now, in, in uh, the general population, but as well in HIV, realizing how much more, uh, how much people can benefit uh, from stopping smoking, adding life to their years and adding years to their lives. So this is really about opportunities. Uh, people are gonna make those choices when, when they're ready to make them, and we just wanna support them uh, and have the best evidence for them to make the right choices.